Mark chapter 11, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Look at that that person next to you and say, Have faith in God. Let's try one more time. Look at the other person and say, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, anybody in here have mountains in your life? Says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, everybody say, believe. Let's, let's say just a little bit louder. Everybody say, believe. believe. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, can you just flip over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And let's all say it together. For we walk by and not by, one more time, for we walk by, not by, Father, I pray an anointing upon this word this morning. Holy Spirit, we are so incredibly dependent upon you. Lord, I thank you, God, for just everything that you've done in us as a church, every individual's life that is being changed and challenged and strengthened by the power of your spirit. And Lord, we just ask for a powerful anointing in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. The title of my message this morning, if you're taking notes, is Faith Beyond Feeling. Faith Beyond Feelings. Let's all say that together. Faith Beyond Feelings. Hope you guys don't mind, but I want to I actually want to preach down here this morning with you because the truth is I'm going to end up down here anyways. And so I just thought, you know, instead of having to go up and down the stairs, I I might as well just stay down here with you guys. Are you guys okay with that? Many of us have been fasting and praying and really seeking God and trying by some some way to see breakthrough in our life. And and last week I spoke a message entitled The Recipes for Breakthrough. And we talked about how Israel was in a battle that they could not win in the natural. They had to have the power of God to intervene. And there were things that they did that produced breakthrough. They fasted and prayed. Amen? They'd humbled themselves before the Lord. They they repented of their sins and the attachment of sin in their life. They, They thanked God. There were some amazing things that they did to see breakthrough in their life. And, and we keep crying out for breakthrough. Many of you here, you, you've taken upon yourself to say, Lord, I want to I fast and I want to pray. I want to see breakthrough because we understand the power of fasting. Because fasting is humbling ourselves before the Lord. And as we do that, the Lord says, He will lift us up. Amen? Well, this morning, I, I don't know about you, but you could possibly be discouraged. I know it's my tendency to when things don't go my way, um, which, which has a tendency to happen a lot, but especially when you have three kids that are wonderful, but they all have, my, my kids are absolutely amazing, but they're very opinionated. I don't know where they get it from. Uh, I think it's their mom, but anyways, I love you. It's actually me. Uh, the, that Morocco side is extremely opinionated, but you know, at t- at times, I feel like I'm in a battle. You know, the other day, we are in the car, and we're like, hey, kids, where do you want to go? One kid says, Chuck E. Cheese. The other kid says, I want to go to the zoo. The other kid says, I want to go home and watch a movie. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I go with them. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like this, this war of where do we go? You know, for many of us, it's kind of how we live in life. There's like this battle this tug of war that we fight, and sometimes it's this tug of war of the flesh against the spirit, and sometimes it's the, the will of our desire tugging against the will that God desires for us and his purpose. 
And we have these battles within us. And as we, as we look at this passage in Mark 11, we, we are confronted with the fact that we desperately need to change our desire, to change our direction, and come into a place called supernatural, come into a place called breakthrough, and have a life of mountain-moving faith. I don't know about you, but honestly, I want mountain-moving faith. This morning I want to deal with, with three things that, interestingly enough, these are the things that occurred here in Mark chapter 11. And again, turn back with me, because I want to just take a look at a couple of things. Number one, everybody say, have faith in God. Now, He is the bedrock of our belief system, of what we believe, where we go, what we do. You cannot have faith in any other thing. If you put your faith and your trust in any other thing, let me tell you something, you're going to be disappointed. We have faith in God. I think for many of us, we, we battle so much with this, this idea of faith and how if we just believe in something strong enough, it'll come about. We can think things into motion, right? There's a battle that all of us have. And I, I want everybody to say this word with me. It's called living in the balance. Everybody say that, living in the balance. Now let me tell you kind of what happens. There's two schools of thought, okay? There's a school of thought that, that teaches the sovereignty of God, meaning God is sovereign. There's no one beside him. There's no one that can compare to him. He, he makes his own decisions. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is the sovereign God, and there is nothing that happens that not only does he know about, but that he has not set into motion. Are you hearing me? Now, in case you're wondering, that is true, okay? We believe in this church that God is completely and totally sovereign. Well, on the, on the, other, on the other side, on the other school of thought, is this idea that we can have faith that moves the hand of God. That if we just think about something enough, command God enough, now I'm, I'm talking about the extreme, we can command, thing, command God to do things. He's at our beck and call. As long as we faith it, it shall happen. All right, are you with me? These are the two schools of thoughts that we live in. Now, the problem is that there are a lot of people that are say it's just about the sovereignty of God, and that's it. Or they'll say it's about faith, 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 and that's it. Yes, it's both and. God within himself designed an avenue, and I hope you can hear this, God within himself designed an avenue by which we can please him. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means he gave us something that God responds to inside of him. In his very sovereignty, God designed faith to be something that pleases him, designed faith to be something that he responds to. Not something that commands him that we can order God. God, I want a steak today. God, where's my car right now? God responds to faith. God responds to faith. For many of us, we, we find ourselves in this battle, though, about what we're controlled by. I find myself many of times, <laughs> what leads my life? What leads my direction? Who am I controlled by? Who, who's the author of my life? I would venture to say that for most of us, 90% of the time, and I could be wrong, maybe that's just my own percentage, 80% of the time, most of us are led and controlled by our emotions. Feelings. Nothing more than... All right, I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are helping me out with that song. I appreciate it. I'm never going to do that again. Anyways, 
But, you know, we're bound by those things. We're controlled by those things. I want to just tell you a story. Here's, here's the disciples in there. They're in a boat with Jesus, and they're having a good time, you know. But, but all of a sudden, a storm comes, and Jesus has the audacity to be sleeping. Like he's the big wig or something, you know what I'm saying? Like he's the boss. And he's just taking a nap. He's sleeping. And, and the disciples are in the midst of this storm, and their reaction is, Jesus, we're all going to die. We're in for it. It's over. I'm sure it's Peter walks up to Jesus and be like, Jesus, we're going to die. We're all going to drown. What's wrong with you? Don't you care about us? And Jesus looks at him, gets the makapia pia in his, out of his eye, right? Takes a big old stretch. He's like, hold on a second. I got to stretch a little bit. This, this boat's a little hard. Gets up, casts, tells the storm, Peace be still. The wind, the waves stop. And Jesus looks at them. And now this is the issue. Many of us, we blame the storms and we blame the mountains. For many of us, the problem is the mountain. For Peter, James, and John, those disciples, the problem was the mountain. The problem was the storm. The problem was the circumstance. That's where the problem lied. And they came to Jesus and said, God, don't you care about the problem that we're in? And Jesus does not correct the problem. He says, storm, peace, be still. But what Jesus corrects is the perception. See, a lot of times, many of us, we, the, we think the issue is the problem. We think the issue is the experience that Job is going through. And we look at the experience and say, I'm going through a Job experience. What's going on in my life? Something's wrong. Look at this problem. Look at this circumstance. Look at this giant. Look at this mountain. Look at this storm. And we focus on the problem. And God is saying, it's not about the problem. He says, Peter, James, John, it's not about the storm. He says, don't you know? That it's about your faith. You see, if you just had the right perspective, you would realize that the storm's not the problem. Our faith is the problem. And our faith is the solution. As we see this, he says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain. Be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done for you. The mountain's not the problem. In your life, I want to say this, some of you are standing face to face with the mountain. You're in the midst of the storm. You're, you're going through a situation. I want you to hear this. The problem is not the storm. The issue is not the mountain. It is your faith. I love my reaction to things. My wife, <clears throat> my wife is solid as a rock. I have a tendency to be a little emotional. <laughs> you know, something happens, it doesn't go my way. I'm like, ah, it's horrible. My wife's like, shut up. Man up, dude. <laughs> she doesn't say that she wants to. No, I'm sure she does. Many of the times she's looking at me going, There's times when I just let my emotions get the best of me. I let my feelings get the best of me. And the sad part about it is this, that my feelings and my emotions and the circumstances are the very things that determine my direction. And so I, here I am and I feel a certain way. And so I allow my feelings to control me and they take over. And then I find myself in a place where I'm like, how did I get here? Oh, that's right. I threw a hissy fit or a temper tantrum. And I'm like, because ah, I want in my way. I guess I'm just preaching to myself. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I, maybe, I, all right, I'm just going to, good job, Pastor. I needed this word. That was good stuff. But man, you know what? There's been moments in my life where I recognize, I'm like, man, I got emotional issues. I got a lot of emotional baggage. I got some fractures in my faith. 
and I recognize someone that said, the only way I'm going to get there is if I have the faith that carries me there. And so instead of giving into my emotions, instead of giving into my fear, instead of giving into my doubt, all my concerns, all the issues, letting the circumstance overwhelm me, guess what? I get my toes in the ground. I get down. I said, I'm going to have faith and I'm going to overcome. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to let myself, I'm going to just one step at a time. I made that. So it happens to me. There are these moments where faith takes over. It's just, just like you look at the circumstances. This just makes absolutely no sense. Why am I here today? What am I doing? Huh? God, are you really asking me to go to the other side? Don't you know that there's a storm of brewing? Jesus knew. Let me tell you something. Jesus, Guy Hoggy has nothing on Jesus. <laughs> Guy Hoggy's got nothing on Jesus. Jesus knows the weather. And didn't you think that when Jesus got into that boat and said, let us go the other side, it is, it is the purpose of the Father that we go to the other side. Didn't you, don't you think he knew? If he knows the very purpose of the Father, don't you think that he knew that a storm was going to come? I'm sure you know Peter. He's a fisherman. He kind of knows what's going on. He's kind of like, hmm. I don't know, Jesus, you know, the wind's kind of coming from the north or the south or whatever it's called. And, and it just, I don't, I don't know if today's a good day to travel. Well, maybe we should just, you know, let's go to a different area today. You know, just. No, well, we're going to the other side. Just because there's a declaration of something that you're going to be something that you're going to become, something that you're going to accomplish, doesn't mean that it's going to be without storm. It does not mean that the road and the journey that you travel to your destiny is going to be perfect, is going to be without resistance. A lot of us, we thought that, oh, I'm going to get into this fasting and praying thing, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm going to like go up to the fourth heaven, and it's going to be amazing, and it's just going to be, everything's going to be perfect, and then all of a sudden, like resistance comes, and we're like, what is this? Obviously, God did not intend for me to fast. You know, it's, it's just like God, God says, hey, son, I want you to move your family to Oahu, Leave your comfort zone and go. And we're like, oh, it's going to be perfect. We're going to grow the church to a thousand in like half a week. And it's going to be awesome. And it's going to, and then all of a sudden we hit resistance. We're like, what is this? Obviously, we're in the wrong place. Because there's resistance. I know none of you have ever said that. Never thought of you like, see, I knew this. Looking at your husband, I knew this wasn't God. You got us into this mess. You said, God said, go to the other side. And look, the moment we got in the boat, a storm came. What's wrong with you? You didn't hear from God. I'm just having fun this morning. Can you guys let me have fun? I'm just, that's what happens when I get to walk around. And, ah. Anyways. Do you know, that's what happens in our life, right? We hit this wall of resistance and we're like, okay, this is a sure tell sign. Obviously. Because if it's God's will, that means it's perfect and nothing's going to happen. And we forget that the devil wants to do everything he can to resist us on our journey to our destiny. And we don't understand that he'll put people in the way. He'll put mountains in the way. He'll put issues in the way. He'll get you in the way if he can. Sometimes I realize that I am my faith's worst enemy. Anybody else in here, you're your faith's worst enemy? Yeah, praise God. But Jesus, he knows what to do in the moments of resistance. You apply faith. See, many of us, it takes faith to start on the journey, start on the road. But when you hit resistance, you don't say, obviously, there's a problem with my faith. No, your faith is being tested. I've seen people, you know, 
they get this whole thing and the pastor's like, you need to give to the Lord, give your tithes and your offerings. God will bless you. And you're like, oh, I'm going on that journey. I like that abundance, blessed life journey. I take Malachi chapter three to the bank. And so guess what? You start on your blessing, abundance, supernatural giving, supernatural receiving, blessing of just tithing and offerings. And you're just like, this is a wonderful journey. And two weeks later, you get a bill that you didn't expect to get. And like, Jesus, wake up. (laughs) I got a storm on my hands. What's going on? Lord, you said. That if I tithe, you would open up the heavens. And then we go, pour out such a blessing. (laughs) Lord, trust me, I can contain a little bit more. I am waiting. And then then all of a sudden, we we start going, oh my goodness. Well, maybe this tithing and and giving thing just doesn't work. Because I have resistance. Lord, maybe this journey isn't worth it. I mean, I, I know you said that on the other side of this journey is this, 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 and this, and that's awesome. I want some of that. But Lord, this, this whole resistance stuff. I... Get a little apprehensive next time God tells us, hey, I got some place for you to go. You're like, no. Realize something. That if you're going to do something by faith, get ready for resistance. This is the biggest problem. And i got a problem with God on this. I'm just being straight up. I don't ever understand this. You see, you know the story when Jesus goes into the desert and all of a sudden, in our thinking, when we read the story, we think that the devil's like playing hide and go seek, you know, with, with Jesus. He's just waiting for the opportune time and Jesus doesn't know he's coming. And he's like, he wants to just like jump out at Jesus and be like, boo, right? We think that in our head. We're like, the devil's coming to get Jesus. Just try and surprise him and get him in his weakest moment. That's not true. As a matter of fact, Jesus went to the desert to get weak so that he could face the devil and get victory over the devil. The Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the place of resistance to be tempted by the devil. Read it. The Bible says Jesus led by the Holy Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Why? Pastor, that don't make a lot of sense. You mean Jesus? You mean God wants to lead me into a place of temptation? No, God wants to lead you into a place of resistance. Because he understands something. When your faith is exercised, you get strong. Because the thing that the thing is this, when Jesus walked out of that desert, the Bible says this, that Jesus filled with the power, filled with the power came out and he began to do signs and wonders and miracles. You see, I want you to understand something. It's like a switch. Power isn't power unless you use it. I can have all the power that I need to light up this building, but until I poof, flip a switch, I have nothing. You see, that resistance for many of us puts our faith into action and it flips a switch of the supernatural, putting us into a place where we have to depend upon the Holy Spirit. We have to bypass the weakness of our flesh. We have to bypass the insecurity and the fear of our flesh. And we have to tap in to the supernatural that only the Holy Spirit can bring us to. Do you know why I believe in fasting and praying? Let me tell you something. You have to intentionally bypass the flesh. When you fast and pray, you are making a statement. You know what, flesh? You don't have the capacity to get me to my place of destiny. And so I need to tap in to something else. I need to get a little bit more power from something else. Because flesh, you're weak. You got some issues. You got some insecurity issues. You got some doubt issues. You got some fear issues. And the problem is this. Your flesh does not have the ability or the capacity to begin to birth faith into existence. We think 
if we just build up our flesh that our faith will get stronger. If you weaken your flesh, your faith gets stronger because faith is only produced by one avenue and it is the spirit of the most high God. He says that he gives to every one of us faith and a measure of faith. Faith does not come by 24-hour fitness. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. I've been watching T.D. Jakes way too much lately. <laughs> Praise God, I just shave my head bald and go get a tan. I'm fired up because I realized something. This last week, my gosh, my feelings and my emotions, whoo, they were screaming. Want to eat, 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 eat. Oh, come on, eat, eat. You can do it. <laughs> eat. I don't want to eat. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I want breakthrough more than... Oh, you was listening. I want breakthrough more than bacon. I know. But see, this, this, this is the problem. The Bible says that there's only one that knows the hearts, the thoughts, and can perceive all the thoughts of men. It is the Spirit of God. You cannot obtain your breakthrough. You cannot move a mountain by sure will and determination. You have no authority or power to command the mountain. The mountain will not obey your flesh. As a matter of fact, the only person that can move a mountain is its creator. One of the things that Jesus deals with in Mark chapter 11, he says, whatever you ask, and if you, if you, if you look there, you'll see, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, now this is what's interesting, the original context of that word is not the word ask. It's actually the word desire. Whatever you desire, everybody say desire. Now I recognize that my, my flesh has a specific desire. I have a will, unfortunately, I have a very strong will. Most people when they say, don't do this, mm -hmm. don't put, look, if you don't want me walking on your grass, don't put a sign on your grass that says don't walk on my grass. I will walk all over. I will dance on your grass. You'll be like, ooh, ooh. right? Right? So you're like, if you don't want me to do something, don't tell me not to do it. We got issues. But the biggest problem with, with our flesh is this, that we have a specific desire, and until you can get yourself to a point where you have the ability to bypass the desire of your flesh, you can't even tap into the true desire where faith is expressed and activated. Your fleshly desires cannot activate faith. I'll say it better this way. Your flesh cannot activate mountain-moving faith. Impossible. Because it doesn't come there. There's a disconnect. It's not connected to what it needs to be. You see, my flesh, my, we call it the soul, it's connected to you. It's my filter. It's the place that if someone says something to me, I filter it through my soul, my mind, and I, I, it's the place where my emotions rest. Right? So here, as long as I do things in my flesh, in my mind, in that place of my emotions, as long as I exist in there, when it comes to faith, I become inept. Because what happens is this, I can't properly filter because I have all these other areas in my life and my emotions that are fighting and having a tug of war with my faith. What has to happen is I have to bypass that emotional part of my life that controls everything called the soul, where I process, where the circumstance, that's where I process the circumstance. That's where I look at the mountain, I go, wow, that's a big mountain that happens in my mind. 
But you see, there's another thing that God has put in us. We're three parts. We're body, mind, and spirit. Body, soul, spirit. There's this spirit that God put inside of me that is connected to the spirit of God. And he has made it to where there is something that he has developed within my relationship with him that helps me bypass the destruction and sometimes the toxicity of my flesh into the purpose and the will of God. It's called the spirit. And that's why Jude says this. Build yourself up in the most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there is an avenue by which I can bypass that which causes destruction, which where my fear begins to prey on me, where I, I get all caught up in the emotion. And I bypass my flesh to a place where the Lord begins to strengthen my spirit and where that place where faith grows. And when that faith begins to grow, it begins to affect everything. Because I'll tell you why. When my spirit is strong, it doesn't matter how weak my flesh is. Because if there's anything that I know, is that the spirit overpowers the flesh any day. That's why we're not succumb anymore to the desires of the flesh. But now we are overcome with the spirit. That's why we speak in tongues. That's why, that's why this church will always encourage and continue to encourage people to speak in tongues because that is a tool that God has given us to bypass the flesh, to bypass your emotions. This is the greatest thing. Speaking in tongues and praying in the Holy Spirit is actually a tool that God gave us to get a new desire in our life. To go past just the simple desires of our flesh and go into the place where God can begin to filter in and pour in his desires. There have been moments where I have been wanting and longing for things in the flesh that were my desire, my things. And all of a sudden I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden God begin to change my mind. And God begin to change my perspective about certain things. I begin to see the mountain differently. I begin to long for different things. The, the, the person that said, I don't want to go to the other side. All of a sudden started walking around going, I'm ready to go to the other side. Come on, bring it on. Let's get in the boat. Peter, get in the boat. Peter, get in the boat. We're going to the other side right now. And when a place where faith was gone, faith became restored by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, right now, some of you, before you got here, your faith was emaciated. Your faith was weak. Some of you are on the verge of saying, mm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. This fight ain't worth it. But seeing right now, some of you are like, ooh, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Come on. Come on. What you got, devil? What? You're like, what, mountain? What? So we got, so we, come on, bring the storm. Bring, bring, bring. Why? Come on. Come on. I know some of you are like, man, what did he drink this morning? It's actually one of those like health food drinks from Starbucks or something like that. Crazy. Look, I'm having fun this morning. It's okay every so often I just have some fun and I just kind of preach to you. See, God, I want to just build up something. He said, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And so if I can get you to hear this morning that with God nothing is impossible. That it's not by might nor by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. God says, look, I'm, let me tell you something. You're not going to get to that point of victory in your life, in the power of your flesh, you get there under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. And he says, if I be for you, and if I be with you, who can be against you? If I can get some people in this church that can let faith arise, that can tap in beyond the realm of the flesh into the realm of the supernatural, the Bible says that there is nothing that will be impossible for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, for all those who have a faith that is rooted and grounded in the biblical foundation of Jesus Christ, who has all authority, all power in Jesus name
I'm excited this morning. I just, I want to kick the devil in the teeth this morning. Maybe none of you felt resistance this week. Maybe, maybe some of you, you just like chill. It's good stuff. Maybe none of you got sick. Maybe nobody said anything negative to you this week. Maybe nobody did anything to conflict you inside and make you feel a different way. Maybe, maybe no one, no one this week said no to you. Maybe none of you went through obstacles this week, but for those who felt resistance this week, for those who went through some obstacles this week, for those who had people surrounding them and say, you can't, you won't. For those who met the devil face to face this week and the devil spoke lies to you saying that you can't accomplish it. You're not going the other side. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to resist you. For those who are facing resistance today, I want to tell you that God wants to download on you a faith that can move mountains if you'll take hold of it, if you'll realize that you have to bypass the natural into the supernatural and let your spirit tap into the spirit of the most high God. God will give you the faith that is required to move your mountains. Come on, somebody.